I want to give you an example here, though, that's very important. Take Rahab. Remember when Joshua uh, went to conquer Jericho? Now, why was Rahab not killed like the others in, in, in her uh, particular people group? You know why? Because she loved the true God. She trusted the true God. And when you think about it, Rahab was a descendant of whom? Ham. Rahab was a descendant of Ham, and she married an Israelite because she's in the line of Christ. When you trace back those genealogies, is that spoken against in the Bible? Not at all. Not at all. Why could she marry an Israelite? Because she trusted the same God. That's why. That's what it's all about. Ruth was a Moabitess, and, and she married an Israelite, and she's in the line of Christ as well. So do you realize that in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, it's traced back through uh, Rahab to Ham? Isn't that fascinating? You see, ultimately what it comes down to, or what the Bible's talking about here in, in marriage, is the fact that you need to make sure that you marry someone who trusts in the same God. That's what it's all about. You know, there was nothing that tells us that uh, because of the Tower of Babel that, that therefore people from different, different groups uh, around the world can't marry. In fact, I've even had some people say that, oh, you know, um, the Tower of Babel split up the groups and God meant them, meant them to, be, to be separate. Well, where does it say that, that the Tower of Babel had anything to do with marriage when you think about it? And not only that, God tells us to go out and preach to every tribe and nation. Isn't that right? So we need to learn their different languages. If anything's going to bring uh, different cultures back together again, it's going to be what? Learning their languages. Isn't that right? I've had, even heard some people say that, ah, oh, so-called interracial marriage will help bring in the one world government. <laughs> Well, number one thing, you know, that means you shouldn't learn foreign languages and you shouldn't go out and preach the gospel to all these different, different uh, cultures, as far as I'm concerned. Besides which, if it was Christian marrying Christian, why is that going to be in rebellion against God and some world, one world government? And God's in charge of history anyway. I mean, God is sovereign. So we need to look at this from a biblical perspective. That's why we need to be very aware of the passages in the Scripture. Galatians 3.28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one in Christ. And, and we are all the one race, and we all go back to Adam. Uh, Romans 10, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Colossians 3.11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barren or Scythian, fond or nor free, but Christ is all in all. See, again, it's so important that we build our thinking on the Bible and not take our prejudices to the Bible. You know what I found as a Christian, as a father? If I try to impose legalistically ideas that are outside the Bible on my children, if anything, it would drive them away from God's Word. But if I build the principles from God's Word and build a way of thinking and get them to build their thinking on God's Word so they see it's, it's not just me imposing my ideas on them, but I'm building thinking from the Bible, what a difference that makes. makes a tremendous difference because then our children see it's not just a structure being imposed on them it's that we're building the structure from the foundation up and that foundation is God's Word and again just to remind us you know why the importance of all of this well if we all go back to Adam if there's Adam in our past Adam in our ancestry it means God owns us it means we're accountable to him 
It means he sets the rules. But if there's ape in our ancestry, if we're just a product of evolutionary processes, then we own ourselves and we can do whatever we want to do. It makes a big difference what you believe about where you came from and who you believe that your ancestor is. I really recommend to you a little book that we have called The Origin of the Races. It just summarizes uh, what I've talked about in this session and one of the other sessions that dealt with Cain's wife and the origin of so-called races. And we have a brand new book called One Blood. Uh, which deals with this issue of the origin of the races and all the things that we've talked about in these sessions in much, much more detail.